Good morning, everyone. So I saw the gentleman over there waving. Good morning. <laughs> Glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? Yeah. Now, come on. I'm here in the choir over here. What about the, the congregation out here? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning, Ginger? I was I want your worshiper. Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. I'm excited to be here this morning, and I'd like to just ask us, if you're able, to please stand and say hello to someone really quick, and we're going to spend some time praising the Lord. Hallelujah.
that you have towards us, your people, Lord. We worship and praise you. Thank you, Jesus. I stand amazed. I stand amazed in the prayer. Jesus, because there's power in that name. Do you believe that this morning? And I, as I was preparing this week, and, and I've just been seeing so much, the Bible is about holiness, but the scriptures that I've been reading is in, specifically in Kings too, about all the kings that came into power, most of them in there were evil in the sight of God. And there were a few that found favor with God because he was calling them to holiness, but they refused to live a life of holiness. And it really just struck a chord because a lot of times we end up um, in situations in our own lives because we don't make Jesus the Lord of our life, right? Yeah. That goes for all of us. Yeah. And sometimes we end up where we end up because we don't. And I was, it really challenged me to really take a look at my own life in areas, again, once again, that I need to reflect on and allow the Lord to do a work in. And... Oftentimes, too, dads always raise me to speak the name of Jesus. You know what the problem is? Yes. Speak the name of Jesus. Because there is power in that name. And I've learned that in situations when I'm really struggling with something, sometimes when you don't know what more to do in your life, you need to start speaking the name of Jesus. Amen? And I love in, in Philippians 2, let's see if I can find it again here this morning. Ah. Um, sorry here, I just found it this morning. It says, Philippians 2, verse 9 through 12, 11, says, Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that at every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I'll tell you what, that's a powerful name. And the Lord's calling us to holiness in our lives and the way that we live. And when we walk through challenges and adversities in our life and we don't know what to do, we need to call on the name of Jesus because Jesus can make a way for us through no matter what we walk in. And I was thinking about these kings. If they would have only obeyed and called on the name of Jesus, just think of how God could have truly used them instead of their kingdoms coming down. Amen? Amen. We serve a wonderful God, and as we enter into a time of worship, I just want you to reflect on that name of Jesus. If you've come here with a need this morning, just shut your eyes and close yourself in with Jesus this morning and to know that he is the way maker. He is able to make anything possible in your life when we serve him. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Falling down in 
changes to the land. Yes. And all who gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song the ages to the land. Let's sing that together a thousand generations. A thousand generations falling down to worship to sing the song the ages to the land.
we worship you, we magnify your name this morning, Lord.
watch the uh, Democratic convention or listen to it didn't have anything I wanted to hear but I did hear the opening about it where Bill Clinton stood up and gave a speech and he started out by saying that Joe Biden healed everybody during the pandemic <laughs> and I thought no he didn't he has no power to heal. But there is one with a powerful name. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the one that heals all. One way or another, we are healed in the name of Jesus. Joe Biden did not put everybody back to work. Only God can supply all of our needs. He's the only one. No man can. And when all, the, all that big arena started clapping and praising him for saying that, I thought everyone sitting there is guilty before God. And I thought how sad that many people led astray from a party that believes in abortion, homosexuality, transgenderism that destroys human life, destroys it. I pray that God will do a work in many of those people's lives that were in that arena that day. Because if they don't, they're going to end up in an eternal hell. And it's really sad when you think about it, how many people are, will, will vote for somebody that believes all of that too. But I want to tell you this morning, if you're in here this morning, I'm not going to call people forward this morning for healing. But if you need a healing in your body, I'm just simply going to ask that you just touch your chest, put it up on your chest there and just indicating I have a need in my life, Lord, and he knows that anyway. I believe he's healing today. He is the healer. He always will be the healer. And I believe he's healing today. I know several are sick this morning with whatever, but he is the healer. If you're watching by Facebook, Jesus Christ is the healer. He's the only one that can heal us. Heavenly Father, we stand before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We glorify you. We praise you, Father. And this morning, we come before you a needy people. And Lord, all of us that have our hands upon our chest and have a need within our body, emotionally or physically, Father, even spiritually, Father, you are the healer. And we come to you not begging. We come to you thanking you for what Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross, that by his stripes we were and we are healed according to your word. You sent your word and healed us, and we receive that by faith right now. Lord, we do not depend upon our feelings, the circumstances of what the problem is. We focus on you, the problem fixer, the healer, and we receive it. We will stand and claim what you've given to us up on the cross. And we speak to our bodies, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. And we come against every foul spirit, every infirmity, every spirit of infirmity is trying to hold on to people's lives with illness or sickness, disease, whatever, we speak to those infirmities in the name of Jesus Christ to let go of God's people in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your divine healing power. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. And we thank you and we praise you for it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks. Everybody's so friendly this morning. That's good to see. <laughs> Thanks for joining us and to entering into praise and worship and fellowship. Thank you for coming to give glory to the Lord. Um, let's please silence our cell phones so we don't distract from the service, if we could. We just want to welcome all the new visitors. Please raise your hand, the ones that are here, and Fred can hand you out a brochure to tell a little bit about the church. We're glad you're here. We want to welcome those that are joining on Facebook, too. Thanks for stopping by on the channel to view us and if you're ever in our area please come in and join us uh, let's um, wish our favorite bass player Marco a happy birthday today <laughs> another year younger <laughs> 26 wow <laughs> dyslexic <laughs> Uh, if you have a prayer request, please fill out a card out in the prayer box, out in the foyer, or submit a request to prayer at cfassembly.com. All of the requests are prayed over each week. And join us for prayer each Sunday at 9.30 down in the lodge as you first come in, or 6 p.m. online via Zoom. <laughs> Men's Bible study is going to meet Wednesday night at 6.30 in the church. And please join us after the service for next Sunday for Fellowship Hour. Grab a cookie, cup of coffee, and get to know someone that you haven't met before. Uh, we're going to pray over offering now, so please feel free to come up and put it in the plate here. Or you can go online. They have online giving, and there's a tab in there that says Give Now. And it's at the website at cfassembly.com. So please come up and repetize and as I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your provision. We thank you, Lord, that you provide everything that we need. And Lord God, if people are lacking in jobs or finances, health, whatever it might be, Father God, reach out and touch those needs that they have, Father God. And now we just, out of obedience and love for you, we want to bring our tithes and offerings to you to further your kingdom, for your purpose, for your glory. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. Come up for Sunday's school prayer. 
Kids, please come up front. We'll pray over you. You're all shy this morning, aren't you? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we lift these children up to you, Lord God. They are your precious gifts to us, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you would do a work within each one of them. Let your Holy Spirit just flow through them. And as they go to their classes today, open up their ears and their hearts to hear what your Spirit is saying to them. And I ask, Father, that you would give the teachers, leaders, the words that you want them to speak to these children. We thank you, Father God, for them, and we ask now for a hedge of protection over them. Be with them as they come and go, Lord. May your glory rest upon them. In Jesus' mighty name we ask this. Amen. Amen. Pastor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Renee. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm excited about Jesus. Yeah. All right. All right. The heat hasn't slowed you down, right? You just got to be on fire for the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, the Lord hasn't come yet, so I'm going to preach another message. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I'm going to just say this real quick again. It's pure evil, what we're watching in our nation. God is, going to, is raising up an army of people right now. I want to be part of that army. I want to be a soldier of the cross. I want to stand up bold as a lion and not being afraid in the day that we live, but being willing to stand up. Because if the enemy is getting so bold to have a convention and introduce all these evil things into our world, God's people need to stand up and introduce righteousness to the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You say, oh no, not him again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. I just want to make a quick announcement. Yeah, yeah I forgot. Come on up, Ginger. Yeah. I forgot, yeah. You know, I, I yeah. Time. Ready for a rocking chair. Yeah. Um, there is a chair out there, a rocking chair. It's kind of cute, it's a little um, whatever kind of handle. A donation, gift it for you if you want it, uh, and it would go to the women's group, and it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Ginger. Sorry about that. You know that. Well, I'll forgive you. All right. See, that's what, that's what we're supposed to do right there. Thank you. Uh, but anyway, uh, praise the Lord. I want to remind people, too, if you want to be a member, uh, please, there's uh, membership forms outside the deal. We are going to introduce uh, some new members here in a couple of weeks. And if anybody else has wanting to do that, the forms are out there. Fill it out and get it back to me. And uh, we'll make sure you're recognized. And again, being a member does not lock you into this church, doesn't make you pay your tithes, doesn't make you do anything. It's simply an opportunity that when you come to the annual business meeting, if there's any major issues going on, you have the right to vote as a member. That's all it's for. So just to make people feel at peace on that. So it's important for a church to have membership whenever, if it ever goes into where we're adding on or anything, it's good to have as many members as possible too. So praise the Lord. Remember that, please. And uh, I'm glad you're here today. It's good to see all your smiling faces. I got to see those ivories. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, you on Facebook too, welcome. And we're always happy to have you. There's several people to watch us on Facebook too. And uh, we want to greet them also as well. Even after the service is over, many people check it out. And uh, God is on the move. So, Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we praise you, we glorify you, we honor you, Lord. We thank you for your presence here this morning. And Father, I ask that your anointing be upon this congregation, those listening on Facebook, social, social media, Father, that they receive your word, your word, my, not my word, your word, Lord. Let it be an anointing on your, which there is on your word, Father, that it again challenges us, convicts us, brings encouragement, whatever that word for that person today, that Holy Spirit will do a mighty work there. So we praise you and we thank you that you've given us the word of God in writing, Lord. We praise you for that in the mighty name of Jesus, we all said. Amen. 
Amen. So last week, what did I preach on? Oh, yeah, offenses. Right? Okay. That's what, and I just felt led to kind of continue that on, not on the subject of offense, but I want to preach on today overcoming evil with good. As we are in a time again, and I'm going to keep saying it, we're in a time where hate is filling our earth and there's a lot of evil and good going on and people are calling evil good and good evil. And uh, we are responding in life, even Christians within the family of God. Sometimes we respond against each other's in the wrong way. Amen. And we need to be aware of what God is doing in our lives. So overcoming evil with good. Uh, like I said, last week I spoke uh, on offense and I want to follow through. And hopefully this will be an encouragement to you uh, to help you to grow in your, uh, your walk with the Lord. Because how many know we have to grow maturely Amen. in the Lord? Amen. We got our, our, our spiritual life has got that we got to grow. We can't stay babies. We can't stay doing what we once did in the world if God saved us out of it. And uh, so I like to speak on subjects like that that challenge us. Whether we get upset, you know, God didn't call me here to make you comfortable. He, made, he sent me here to make you mad or glad. And I think it's working. So uh, we, we want to praise the Lord for that because he is doing a work. It's him that does the work in our hearts. It's not me. I'm just a messenger. Whether charismatic or not doesn't make any difference. I'm getting the word out. That's what's important. And living in the times we are, there's division and hate. And, and it's so prevalent. And the Lord will be bringing some into the church, into this church too. God is going to bring people into this church that are going to be obstinate. They're going to be almost hateful. There's going to, we're going to see things happening. And as they do, it's how we respond, which is going to be vitally important in the days ahead. Because the enemy is mad, his time is short, and he's turning up the heat. And he's going to try to bring disruption even within the church, even amongst us. And we need to be mature in how we respond in, and discerning in what's happening around us. Amen? Amen? Because things will happen and we need to be ready. And that's my desire is that we prepare ourselves to be disciples of Jesus Christ, true disciples. And that takes discipline many times. Christi uh, Christianity, revol revol <laughs> there I go again, revolutionized the world. It's the only teaching that has a radical difference from every other religious activity in the world because it's totally different. There's no better illustration of this than it has regarding how to treat those who are against us. Other religions go the other way, but not Christianity, and that's important too. Those who don't like us, those who abuse us, how we are to treat people that treat us that way is vitally important. Whether you are a young boy, a young girl, a teenager here this morning, it's for you as well as the older saints too. I don't care how old you are as a saint, where you are in life, it's important for all of us to remind ourselves how we are to act as Christian men and women. And if we follow what God tells us, we will be happier people and make a real difference in the world in giving God all the glory in how we respond in our lives, amen? That's important. You, we need some happy Christians. Amen. We need some joyful Christians, actually. And I tell you what, you can be a joyful Christian more when you know you're obeying the word of God. Amen? Amen. We can have joy when we know we're doing what we're supposed to do for the glory of God. We can have true joy. In the midst of trials and situations that happen to you and I in this fallen world, we can have joy when we respond to our circumstances and situations according to what this book says and what the Lord said in it. So we need to remind ourselves that. And uh, there is a, a principle that applies to every situation where we are dealing, when we are dealing with people in the world. And we can find this principle taught in many places in the scriptures as you go through it. But I want to uh, turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 17, if you have your Bibles, or we can follow up on the screen too if it's up there. And uh, it says, Recompense, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And that means, as it says, we don't repay evil with evil. That's recompense. We're not to do that according to the word of God. 
And that's what it means. Someone does not, does something bad to us, we don't respond in evil back to them. It's easy to want to do, though, isn't it? And I was convicted even doing this, too, because I know my nature and where I've come from and everything, too. And I'm not perfect either. How many know that? <laughs> Only a few of you? Well, I'm not perfect. I'll let all, everybody know. I'm going to let you know I'm not perfect. God works on me just like he does you and everything. And, and I got to read the word of God and I got to work on my life and get chipped away every single day, too. So it's important, vitally important. But it's too bad to others when they do bad to us. Uh, is called paying back evil for evil. That's the nature of mankind. We want to pay somebody back. If they hurt us in any way, harmed us, made fun of us or whatever, our first thought is how can we get even with them? <coughs> Romans 12, 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. We need the help of the Holy Spirit, don't we? Yes. Would you agree with that, people? Yes. I want you to put that arm up again and just wave at me and say, I agree. Now put the other one up and say, I really agree. Praise the Lord. Now I know I'm in good company here. Amen. Praise the Lord. But here we find the important second part of the general principle. We're not to, be, uh, to do bad things to others when they do bad things to us. Because if we do, guess what? We become just like them. Not like Jesus, but we become like the person who has hurt us, offended us, mocked us, made fun of us, did some horrible thing to us. When we're thinking in our mind and trying to figure out, I wish this would happen to them, or you want to respond with things back to get even with people, we become just like them. We do not become like Jesus at all. We have uh, allowed them to control what we do. That person will do that. We have allowed their bad behavior to conquer us and make us respond in a bad way. Can you relate with that? I can. And we have been overcome by evil when we do that. In our minds, when we think about getting evil, even with somebody who has harmed us, hurt us, whatever, we become like them. And it's evil. God doesn't want us to do that. Paul says, instead of being overcome by evil, to be overcome with good. That means we don't allow bad things that people do to us to make us bad, but we fight against it being good. And that's a fight. That's a good fight of faith. It's it takes a fight within us to want to do good things when we've been abused in some way, verbally, mentally, physically, whatever. We want to get even, but God says, don't do it. We become evil. Romans 12, 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. We may think somebody's going to get away with something if we don't retaliate back to them. But in reality, according to the word of God, they don't. Payday isn't always on Friday. Things come against them. I remember one time as a new Christian, I had a guy at work. He, he went out of his way to try to antagonize me. Was I perfect all the time responding? No. But I was a brand new Christian, but I also wanted to represent Jesus Christ on the job. And this guy just kept coming at me, bumping into me on purpose and different things like that. And pretty soon, I, I just prayed to the Lord, and I asked him to take care of the situation. Well, later on, years later, I moved away, and I found out that that person who was uh, uh, coming against me, causing me grief, causing me problems, I wasn't happy for him, but they found him in a park, running around naked, out of his mind. Lost his fam <coughs> excuse me, his family. I didn't have to touch him. I didn't have to retaliate. I didn't wish it. When I heard it, I wasn't excited. I wasn't happy. I was sad. And that's the way we should be. But God takes care of things he said he would in the word. And so if there's anything, anybody in here watching by uh, Facebook in here this morning, you're going through problems with people right now. They're antagonizing you, abusing you physically, verbally, mentally, whatever it is. Turn it over to Jesus. Amen? Turn it over to him now. Quit trying to think of ways to get even. You lose because you'll become just like them, and God won't see any difference. And we need to remember that. That's why he gave us his word. And there's a lot about it in Scripture, too, right along with offenses. 
We should not look for ways to justify getting even with someone when they've done us wrong. We should not look for those ways. Proverbs 24, 17, 18 says, Rejoice not when thine enemy fails, or yes, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbles, lest the Lord see it and it displeases him and he turn away his wrath from him. Wow. And possibly, whatever that calamity is, might come on you and I. You ever think about that? That happens sometimes. And we need to not rejoice in it, and we're, we're to be aware of it. And it does not please God when we go back and retaliate against someone who has come against us. A Christian is to emulate Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2.21 says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Many times we don't want to hear these parts of Scripture, do we? We want to overlook them sometimes. We want to not pretend that they're not there. But it happens in life. And if it hasn't happened to you yet, it will as you go through life. You need to prepare yourself when it does happen that you go to the Word of God and realize that God wants to make you to like, be like Him and to respond as He did. 1 John 2, 6, it says, He that saith he abideth in Him, meaning Jesus, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Wow. I need the help of the Holy Spirit, don't you? <laughs> But we are overcome evil by refusing to let the bad actions of others make us turn bad or behave badly, too. Don't let it do it. You know, I, I always think it's funny you get on social media sometimes, you disagree with somebody and they're, they're not a Christian, you know they're not, whatever, by their response. And they'll start calling you names and saying all kinds of derogatory things. Some people respond back and like and will say things back to them to get even with it, whatever. Here's how I learned to win them is when they do that, I get on there, I tell them if it's something really gross, I'll say, you know, that Jesus died on the cross for that. His blood will wash you clean from that. And I'll keep saying that repeatedly, and pretty soon there's no more response because there's power in the blood, Amen. and it washes us clean. And I could retaliate the same way, and I could go all day long fighting with somebody going back and forth, but, boy, you bring in Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Respond according to the scripture. And pretty soon you start realizing. I've had people start telling me how they were abused by somebody, and that's why they're angry and everything, where you pull things out of people by just returning good thoughts instead of evil thoughts back to them. Because many times people that come against us, are, they're hurt. They're hurt by somebody, abused by somebody. They're carrying that anger. And the way we can win them over is by responding exactly the way Jesus did. Amen? Amen. I know this is Pentecostal church, but it's too quiet for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we can either think of things of, uh, uh, to get even, we are to overcome the evil of others by acting better than they act. And that leads us to the scripture of 1 Thessalonians 5.15 where it says, See that none render evil for evil unto any man, unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. That means you and I, if you're offended by somebody in your church, we're to take care according to the word of God and how to deal with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Because we don't get along all the time. Anybody ever notice that? Yeah. <laughs> That's why there's so much church hopping. People don't get along with each other. But I tell you what, when you start to grow up and mature, you'll quit church hopping and start dealing with the things when you're offended. And when people are saying nasty things or doing nasty things, you learn to grow up and deal with it according to the word of God. Because it happens. We are a family. Just like in a family relationship, moms and dads and kids and uncles and aunts and grandpas and grandmas, we all have fights. We all have disagreements. We all have arguments, but we don't get rid of our family, do we? Well, some do. And they, at the end of life, they're sorry they did. But I tell you what, Jesus wants you and I to grow and to be people that glorify him and do what he did. Paul rep repeats the principle here, but he uses a bit different word. 
He tells us not to repay evil for evil, treating others badly when they treat us badly. Instead, he says that we must always seek to treat others good. We must seek it. I bet the Holy Spirit right now has got some people in your mind thinking, I've got to start seeking some good here. Whatever would be good for the other person, that we must do. That we must do. Even if they've treated us badly. Hallelujah. It's not easy to do something good for someone who has been mean to you, is it? It's not easy. It's not easy to do good for someone who has hurt us. It's not easy at all. It's not easy to do good for someone who hates us. In fact, it can be right down hard. I'm talking from experience. It can be right down hard. But that is what is commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ for you and I as Christians. He commands it. He doesn't make the suggestion. He commands it. I want to encourage the church family to continuously seek and apply God's wisdom in our daily lives, especially as we navigate through life's challenges that God wants you and I to become like Jesus and to look at people the way through the eyes of Jesus Christ because we represent him. Amen? Amen. He came into the world to win the lost. He called you and I. When he chose you and I, he chose us for a specific reason. He didn't choose you and I to get even with people. He chose you and I to look out and see a lost and dying world and that you and I were called to be salt and light no matter how hard the circumstances are, and they're not easy. We need the Holy Spirit that came into our life to help us to live out our life in front of men and women and children and to be examples. Children need to see mom and dad not talking at home, tearing somebody down, but looking for ways to build somebody up, praying for someone. If you can't, haven't got anything good to say, it says don't say anything. I say when you don't have anything good to say, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for your enemy. Pray for those who hurt you. Pray for those who offended you. Pray for them. And we'll become like Jesus. Philippians 2, chapter 2, 3 and 5 says, Let nothing be done through strife, or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Be concerned about other people too, even if they're not Christian. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's the way we are to think. I have the mind of Christ. When I came to Jesus, I have the mind of Christ now. I'm to operate in him according to this written word, the anointing of the Holy Spirit moving upon me to think about my enemy, those who are verbally coming against me. This world right now, it's easy to get angry at. It's easy to get look at certain people living certain lifestyles. It's easy to look at them and to want to say an offensive word or think an offensive word. God does not want us to do that. He wants to, in our hearts, he wants us to look at that person and say that person needs salvation just like I did. And we need to remember that, people. That's what salt and light does. I know this is a, like Jesus said to the disciples, this is a hard thing to hear. But it's true. And this is where we're either just going to shut it off or we're going to say, yes, Holy Spirit, I need your help to begin to change the way I am, the way I think about people, the way I treat people who think bad and evil about me. Things that have, people try to do harm to me. I'm to think what would Jesus do? That's really a good statement, too. I know it's one that's been used a lot, but really, what would Jesus do right now if somebody came against him and spit at him? Would he spit back? No. No, he wouldn't. Do you know that what it's called when you treat others good after they treat you badly? It's called love. It's called love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Not just any kind of love, but there's a very special kind of love. And the scriptures tell us what that love is. It's an amazing kind of love. It's called the agape love. That's a God kind of love. Not a, a, a worldly love, a lustful love, but it's agape, a pure love. That's who God is. It's the kind of love that comes from God. God wants us to have it and to show it. He wants us to be special. He wants us to be different from the world out there, that the world will be compelled to want to come and join us. I am 
reminded by the story of Joseph. One of my favorite stories in the Bible actually is Joseph. Uh, he was hated, mocked, despised, thrown in a pit, and was sold for 20 pieces of silver by his brothers. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I'm going to read, Gen just bear with me, I'm going to just read a few scriptures out of Genesis here. Genesis 45, verses 1 and 2. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard it. They heard it. And if you know the story of Joseph, God sent him and allowed him to go through a very, very difficult time in prisons and in all the abuse that he had taken in his life to where God was doing a work. Genesis chapter 50, verse 16 and 18. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. Joseph wept. Your life and my life, the impact that Joseph had on his brethren and even the Egyptians at that time, because he did not go evil for evil, but his heart, God was doing a work in him from the time it started. He could have been full of bitterness and hatred, and the, but he always looked to God. And when it got to the end, you could see the humility of Joseph. You can see it. You can hear it. Genesis chapter 15, verse 19 and 21. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it on the good to bring to pass as at this day to save much people alive. Now, therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you, your little ones. And he comforted them and he spake kindly unto them when he could have had them put to death. See, God has got a purpose for every life here. You watching by Facebook. The people who give us the greatest grief in this world could be allowed by God to be there in our life to bring an impact to us, to bring us out where Joseph came, to learn humility that will direct us on the path that he wants us to be, and he will use other people to accomplish that. And so if you have someone against you that is so difficult right now, begin to thank God for that person. Maybe they're like Joseph's brothers that have even wanted to kill him threw him in a pit, sold him, hated him, mocked him, stole from him, everything. Joseph never had hatred or revenge in his heart, that scripture teaches. But there was humility going on, even when he was put in prison with others and accused wrongly. He always stayed with his heart toward God. And look how the outcome, what an outcome that man had. That's what God wants to do in your and my life. God is leading us on the path he wants us to go as his people. This was the event when I did a little work on it, which established the miracle nation of Israel. This is because of Joseph now. This was the founding of that unique people through whom would be given the world the scriptures and of whom one day the Savior would come through Joseph. Had this scene not occurred, the children of Israel would soon be scattered, merged with the other people of the Middle East. It had been a long time in preparation, but God had a long-range goal. Sometimes it seems like they never give up the people who come against us. But God's got a long-term range goal for each one of us, and he's working it out. If we do it his way, we will begin to see that goal become reality into our life instead of walking through life with our smile upside down it'll be upside right realizing the joy of the lord and he'll turn that hate that anger that bitterness that revenge into love true agape love at that person the very people who are giving us the hardest times somebody picks on our children we look at that person hold them up in prayer 
husband and wife abuse, whatever it is, whatever's going on in people's lives, turn it to God and watch God do the work and he will do it the right way, but allow him to humble, you humble yourself as you do it God's way, right? Scripture teaches that. God always says, humble yourself. I have that choice. I can either be prideful, hateful, bitter, revengeful, or I can have a humble heart and say, God, I'd rather shoot them to the moon but I want your way in my life. So I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to forgive them even if they don't want to accept it. I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to pray for them no matter how hurt, how much hurt they've done in my life. I'm going to hold them up to you and ask that you touch their lives and bless them. Watch what God does. And that's hard to do. You need the Holy Spirit. But I believe like Joseph, the Lord is working that lifetime goal in your and my life. We may go through some tough times, but when living and obeying for the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is directing our path. Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your way, and he will direct our path because he's got that long-range goal. He wants us to come out here to be those overcomers, those who overcome, and he wants us to endure and to be overcomers. He's working in us. I've got people in my life, believe me, <laughs> They're challenges. I'll put it mightily. And I need God's help to keep focused that God wants me to do what's right. But my first thinking, the old human nature, the old heart in here that's desperately wicked wants to try to come back. But I got to keep it under control and say, God, you're in control. You are Lord of my life. And you told me to forgive those who hate you. We don't want to hear these words, do we? It's easier to be mean. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's truthful. It's easier to want to get even than to be good sometimes. Luke chapter 6, 32, 33. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those who love them. And if ye, go, if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thanks have you? What good's that? For sinners also do even the same thing. They do the very same thing. But this is what makes Jesus Christ unique. To love our enemies. Even the worst people on earth do that. They can love people who love them and hate and do good things to people who do good things to them. Almost everyone loves people that love them back. Almost everyone will be good and nice toward people who are good and nice toward them. But Jesus wants us to be different than most people. He wants us to be special, unique. He wants us to be. Luke 6, 27, but I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Wow. Why did the Lord have to put that in there? But that is our Lord that said it. Why did he have to do that? I was just having fun getting even. <laughs> Thinking I feel better. Do you, know, you want to know something? When people return evil for evil, a tooth for a tooth, they're not happy when they do get it. That does not bring contentment. It does not bring joy. It does not bring satisfaction. It may for a moment, but long term, you become like the other person that you harmed, like they harmed you. There's never, never satisfaction in it, even though we may think there is, there really isn't. Jesus commands us to not just love people who love us, but who hate us. He says we are to love people who are enemies, people who are out to get us or to love them. He wants us to love those who we know are against us. I saw a whole coliseum full of people on that Democratic Party, and I thought if I walked in there, started preaching Jesus, I would see every horrible thing coming against me in the world. And God told me to love them all. That's right. Every one of them. And we're going to be challenged with those types of people in our lives as the election draws near. We're going to be challenged with it every day of our life. Many times our children will in school. We've got to teach them the right way. We're out to win them, not lose them, and to gain them for the kingdom of God. But how? Again, verse 27, the last half says, do good to those who hate you. 
Do good to those who hate you. What? But that's what Jesus said. Do you know someone in your neighbor who doesn't like you? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> Do you know someone at school who doesn't like you? Don't raise your hands. Do you know someone at work who doesn't like you? Do you know someone in the church who doesn't like you? Do you know someone in your family who doesn't like you and appreciates you? Do you know of anyone who right down hates you? Our fleshly human nature might tell us to respond this way. They don't like me, so I won't like them. Who do we become like? Jesus or them? Our human nature might adopt this attitude. I don't care if they don't like me or if they hate me. I don't care. I just won't have anything to do with them. I still remember the guy that hated me because I shared the gospel with him. Had my little uh, Bible there, my shirt pocket Bible there, and I held it out and he grabbed it on my hand and threw it on the ground right in front of me, right, right in the dealership I was working. He said, don't you ever talk to me about Jesus again. And I looked at him and said, I'm going to because he loves you. Well, that man, within a month, became my brother in Christ. And we talked about Jesus every day from that sense. A guy who hated me for talking about Jesus. I had another guy that called, called me on the phone out of the blue one time, said, I hated you for a year. And he said, I don't know why. But he said, now I know why. Because he said, you told me the truth, and I didn't like it. See, that's what happens when people hate it. When people find out, especially you're a Christian, the devil's going to put in their mind to hate us, to come against us. And when that happens, how we respond is going to make a world of difference. And I blew it many times, to be real honest. But I tell you what, I've also watched it when I did it the right way. And it's a blessing. It's easy to think and feel this way toward those who don't like us or hate us. We cannot learn to love our enemies unless we have enemies. Did you know that? That's why God has allowed us to have enemies. You can't love them if you don't have them. Because God uses those very enemies to do the work in you and I to make us more like Jesus. Jesus was teaching his disciples also that in living and witnessing for their Lord, Lord that they would inevitably have enemies. And so shall we people. We're going to have enemies. And we're, we're going to have a whole bunch of them. But God's going to do a work in us as we do it his way. John 15, 18. If the world hate you, ye you know that it hated me before it hated you. That's what Jesus told us. He was hated, wasn't he? He was rejected by the whole world, but yet he looked down from the cross and he said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And many times the enemy that we have, they don't realize what they're doing to us. They don't even realize it because they're spiritually dead. And if it's people within the church, they ought to know better and grow, mature. Matthew 5, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. There's no way of escape, people. We want to try to figure out a justification for it, but there's no way of escape. Because God knows. He knows that his way works. Ours can only create en enemies and make the hatred even deeper than ever before. That's why family members don't ever get back together and hold, like I said last week, will hold grudges toward one another throughout their whole life and die and get put in a casket. Yeah. Because the hatred got deeper. Jesus says that if we know someone who doesn't like us or hates us, we are to love them, but love them anyway and do good things for them. And that's a hard saying. Romans 12, 14, bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. There you go. You will not find one scripture in Bible giving us a direction the other way. He actually commands us to sit down and think of something nice that we could do for them. When Jesus went into the temple and chased out the money changers, 
He, did, he had righteous indignation. He did not do that to tear people down, but he did it to show that his house was a house of prayer. And he was angry that they were turning it into a den of thieves. But he didn't fight with them. He didn't argue, call them names or anything. He did it for a purpose to let them see how important prayer is. And that he meant business. Romans 12, 20, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Let God take care of it. If you've been abused and hurt, I keep saying it. I'm going to say it repetitiously because you and I are leaky vessels. No matter what the circumstance, whether you know the person, you don't know the person. You know them, the relative, whatever. Someone doesn't make any difference. Feed them. Give them something to drink when they need it. And when by doing that, coal, heaps of coal will be put up on their heads. God will deal with them accordingly. Nobody gets away with anything. Did you know that? When judgment seat of Christ comes, Christians aren't getting away with anything. A lot of them think they are. They think they can do anything anyway because Jesus is their bud. But Jesus isn't a bud. He's Lord. He's king of kings and lord of lords. He is the almighty God, the one who created the universe. He's not my bud. I reverence him. And nothing will slip by him. Nothing. The white, great white throne judgment, you won't want even your worst enemy to go to that one. It's going to be horrifying. We're to win them, people. And we're living in a time, people, we got our work cut out for us. I saw a whole coliseum full of them. If I had to do one at a time, I'd have to do them. But I tell you what, every one of them, unless they know Jesus, they were my enemy. They would be totally against me. And we're going to have that as this politics stuff comes by, and even without the politics part of it, we got enemies surrounding And we need to be working right now. Allow God to do a work in us now in order for us to deal with them when we're attacked by verbal abuse, whatever. We need to be prepared in our hearts to stand the way Christ wants us to. Luke 6, 28. Let's read it again. Bless them that curse you and pray for them that spitefully use you. And that's a commandment that is often ignored. We don't want to even look at it. It's difficult to practice. That's why. Have you ever had someone call you a bad name? Have you ever had someone say things to make fun of you? Have you ever had someone say mean things to you that really hurt you really bad, even when they maybe even didn't mean it? Have you ever had someone tear you down? Have you ever had someone spread bad things about you, things that weren't even true? And that really hurts, doesn't it? That really hurts. I've had that done. Many people have. That really hurts when it's things that aren't true, things that said that are so far fetched, it's unbelievable they would even say it, but they do it. So what do I do? I think that all of us possibly have had things like this happen. It's not very nice when it happens. Jesus calls it being cursed. Our human nature tells us how to respond to such painful incidents in our life when that happens to you and I. If someone calls us a name, what do we do? Call them a name back. That's what we are in the world. Call them a name back. If someone makes fun of us, we make fun of them right back. If someone says mean, hurtful things to us, say mean, hurtful things right back to them. Get even with them. If someone tears us down, tear them down. If someone spreads bad things about you, start telling other bad things about them, even if they aren't true, just to get even with them. That's what we do in the worldly realm. But that's the easy way of handling people who hurt us by what they say. It's easy to do that. But if we follow the path where Jesus is calling us to follow, we're not being the special people what God wants us to be when we do the world's ways. Matthew chapter 5, 38, 39, ye have heard that I've, it's been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, 
turn to him the other also. That's what God is telling us to do. I remember the show with Quigley Down Under when, what's his name, uh, the woman asked him that, why didn't you become a priest? He said, I just couldn't get the knack of turning the other cheek. And there's a lot of people who can't get that knack, but we need to get that knack. We need to do it Jesus' way. If we are going to see the anointing, if we want to see the presence of God in our homes, in our marriages, in our family, we need the presence of God and we need to start thinking Christ-like. We need the mind of Christ. We need that to activate and let him be Lord even over that when somebody hurts us. We need to do it. And I know how painful things can be, but we need the help of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says if someone calls us a name or makes fun of us, we should say something nice in response. I remember my wife said to me, uh, a brother in the Lord, and, and he did his insults out of, that's the only way he knew how to communicate, right? Just making insults. And he come to her, and she kind of knew that anyway, but I like her response, what she said back to him. He made, he'd give her a few insults and everything, and she looked at him and she said, brother, you're my brother in Christ, and I love you. You know what that did to his insults? It squelched him right there. He didn't know what to say. He couldn't come back. But what my wife said to him was so true. You're my brother in Christ, and I love you. And it made him think differently. That's how we're to respond. If someone says something that hurts us, we should say something back that would make that person feel good. If someone tears us down, we are to say something encouraging and supportive. Many times the people who come against us are walking in difficult times and knowing Jesus, they respond the way a sinner responds. I told a quick story here the time my wife now walked in over here in uh, Fridley, I think it was, in a restaurant. We sat down and this gal come over, the waitress, and she brought in and she walks over and she throws our silverware in our place down, boom, like that. The first thing the enemy wants, uh, our hair comes back up on our neck and, oh, I'm a customer. (laughs) But, you know, we didn't do that. When she came back, I said, is there anything in your life that I can pray for you right now? And what did she do? She cried. She actually sat down with us. I could have got retaliated. And I can't believe how many times Christians will go there and they'll be upset because everything isn't perfect in a restaurant. We'll be rude right back to the waitress or the waiter. Even if they're rude, God tells us to love them. Treat them kindly. He'll take care of it. But many times people are going through problems too and it just takes a Christian The old nature wants to realm up, but I tell you what, do it God's way. You'll be blessed. I tell you, we ministered to that that waitress that day, and her life is totally different. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2, 23, or excuse me, 3, 9. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessings, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. Neither evil deeds nor railing, meaning insults and cursing words, should be a Christian's response to anyone. If someone spreads bad things about us, we need to spread good things about them. 1 Peter 2, 23. Who then he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but he committed himself to him that judges righteously. When Jesus was criticized harshly, he never reviled back to him. He's to be our example, right? Did I not read that in two different passages? We're to walk as he walked and to be as he is. And there is our example, our Lord. Just think how different we would be if we responded Jesus' way. We need to, we need to because it's part of loving our enemies. And, and it's being a Christian is what it is. The true meaning of being a Christian, meaning Christ-like. Luke 6, 28, again, the last part, pray for him that despite uses us. Finally, have you ever had some, again, someone mistreat you? Have you had someone be nasty toward you? Have you had someone treat you cruelly? Have you ever been bullied by someone? Have you ever had someone do really bad things and mean things to you? 
Many of us can say yes. Have you ever had someone make life hard for you? Just make it hard. Have you had someone make you miserable? It's easy and natural when you're mistreated to want to become angry and bitter toward people and it makes you bitter and you grow old bitter. It's common to want to get back at the person somehow and make them taste a little bit of their own medicine. But we have to remember that we don't want to be overcome by evil but to overcome evil with good. We don't want to think and feel and act the way others do. We want to be different. Again, we are called to love our enemies. If someone is making life hard for you, if they're mistreating you, Jesus says that we need to pray for them. Pray for them. We need to pray that God would help them change their hearts. We need to pray that he will come to understand that they shouldn't behave as they do. We need to, and that comes through prayer. One of the least ministries and least things many Christians do is pray, but we need to pray for our enemies. It helps us not to become as mean and hateful toward our enemy as they are toward us when we're praying for them. It helps us to have the right feelings and see the situation more clearly from God's perspective than from ours. Colossians 3.13, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgive you, so also do ye. That Jesus, I'll tell you, he's really a great God, isn't he? The thing you're dealing with in your life right now, if you're having issues at work, school, your home, relations, whatever, start doing, if the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart, start doing what God says to do and begin to watch situations change, not so much for that person, but for you. Watch God, and he'll take care of the other situation. Payday doesn't always come on Fridays. Trust him. So I'll just leave it there and say in conclusion. That's a popular word in this church. <laughs> Luke chapter 6, verse 31. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also them likewise. Everything we've learned is summed up in this verse, really how you want to be treated. I want to be treated decently with respect. And Well, if I do, then I need to start treating other people the same way, even when I don't want to. In every situation, we need to treat people the same way that we want them to treat us, whether they are our friends or our enemies. We treat them the way we want to be treated. It's easy loving people who love us, and it's easy to do good things for people who do good things for us, but we got to do it God's way. It takes someone special. It takes a Christian to love people who hate us. And there's many that hate Christians today. You can hear it all over social media, on television, even in the work. Many hate Christians today. We're the hated ones, but we're to show the love. God's going to have a mighty move in this world. He's going to do a great work. And I want to be in the front line of being what he wants me to be. Amen. I want to be one of those that I know the anointing's here. I know his presence is here. And I know he's doing a supernatural work. He'll take care of me when I'm doing his way. Let's all stand. And I think this is an important message today. Some people say, I wish I'd never heard that one. I like being who I am. Well, God wants you to be who you are, but he wants you to be who he is and the way he created you to be men and women. So I'm just going to say again, we're not going to take long here, but I want to, I just want to invite because I believe God is going to bring people to the altar in the last days. We're, we're seeing it more and more churches are starting to bring back people to come to the front. And there's a reason for that. And we collectively come. And if you need help in that area, like I do, I'm already up here, so I don't have to walk. But if you say, Lord, I need that help in my life too, just come on up. Just do it right now. Gather up here and then we'll pray so we can go. Just come on up and say, well, I don't need that prayer. I'm a pretty great guy already. Well, we'll see. Just come up. Let's all gather together. Brother says, squeeze on up. Squeeze on up. Squeeze on up. Small churches don't have the availability of big. 
just squeeze on up. If you see space in front of you, move forward. Come on, move forward. Please. You're not that far away, man. You can get closer. There's one more person. Get behind you. There you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is important time, people, we're living in. We're living in serious. I'm going to keep saying it because we are. Jesus Christ is coming. He's getting the world prepared. And things are happening so rapidly every single day. We're watching, and they're going to increase quickly. And we should have been making preparation years ago. But I tell you what, God is calling a remnant of churches. A remnant of churches, small, big, mostly small right now throughout the nation. Multitudes of small churches. God's raising up pastors and people in churches that are preaching the true word of God because he's on the move. He wants souls. God's not looking to destroy people. He's looking to save people. We got to get our thinking straight. And you and I are the source that he's going to use out there. It's you and I. And we're missing the point. The devil is blinded. That's not real. We're so wrapped up in our own lives that we forget that our lives are meant to glorify God and to reach a lost and dying world. So let's all agree together in prayer as I pray. My prayer, your prayer are all important. And you can listen to me as I pray and agree with me. You can pray to yourself, whatever. But together, I like it when we come together up at an altar because we are the body of Christ. We're family. And we're saying to one another, we agree with what's going on here today. Let's, we're, we're, right now we're at the throne room of God. We are literally at the throne room of God right now. He sees every one of us right now. He's reading our emails. He's reading them. We're before our mighty God right now. We're at his throne. And he said, I hear your prayer. And I'm going to answer it. And Heavenly Father, we stand before you reverently right now. Before you, mighty God. And Lord, many of us, if not all of us, have blown it in life. We've all been hurt. Talked about things that will destroy a person and make them bitter and angry, Lord. And we've fallen into the trap some of us are. And we've been having miserable lives because we think that we like we have Limburger cheese on our mustache and go around thinking the whole world stinks. But there isn't. There's much love out there, Father, of your people that you're raising up in this hour. And Lord, I would ask right now for forgiveness, Father, for us. Every individual here needs to say their own. But I'm just saying it verbally, corporately. Lord, we ask for forgiveness for our attitudes for the way we respond to those who are mistreat us, abuse us verbally, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever it is, Lord. We ask for forgiveness for how we responded in like kind. And Lord, we need you right now. I ask Holy Spirit that you will visit each one of our hearts and our homes. And Lord, we will even today, we will leave this place and the enemy may bring a neighbor, may bring a stranger, may bring bring someone into our life that will approach us with a bad attitude. Lord, help us to respond in love and ask for your wisdom to give us words to say to those people who do that. Give us strength, spiritual strength and ability to respond properly to those who have said evil things. Maybe they said evil things about our children or our wife or our husband or our family in some way that hurts us. But Lord, you want us to still respond in love. For you are the one who will take care of it all. Help us to trust you in the days ahead as we enter these dark times of the world where you said it's going to get darker. But Lord, as it does, let us be bright and lining, shining lights. Let us be salt in this dark world. Let us sense the anointing upon each of our lives that as we obey you, even when we are abused in some way, Father, that we will have a peace that passes all understanding, that we will have a joy for the joy of the Lord is our strength, Nehemiah 8.10. Let us walk around and be joyful people instead of angry people. 
If we've been hurt, Lord, help us to forgive and help us to respond in a positive way. And pretty soon those, those negative feelings and thoughts will go by the wayside. You don't want us thinking how to get even. You don't want us to do things to get even. You want us to respond the way you did, Lord. And so, Father, we need your help. We need your help. And, Lord, should I fail, I ask you to forgive me and help me to get up and start over again trusting you. And we praise you and we thank you, Lord. We are fighting a spiritual warfare and there's demonic activity to send people who are led by demon spirits into our life to disrupt us in some way. But Lord, you will use those very people to help us to become more like you. So Lord, we come against every foul spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, every lying spirit, every deceiving spirit, every abusive spirit in the name of Jesus. We command you to be gone in the name of Jesus from our homes, from our lives, from our families, in Jesus' mighty name. And we call upon you, the mighty God, to loose your Holy Spirit upon every area of our lives, Father, that we walk in the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may glorify you in all that we say and all that we do, all that we eat and all that we drink, that we may glorify you. And we praise you and we glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? Amen. I tell you, I get excited. I don't know why. I just get excited about Jesus. As you're leaving today, look at somebody and say, you're sure a wonderful person.